And again, thanks for joining us. You just heard the President of the United States speak, someone you've known for a long time. What were your thoughts about his comments here on Lincoln's 200th birthday? I thought the President did an outstanding job. He related the history of Lincoln and Illinois and the crisis of keeping the Union together to our current crisis in Washington, drew some real good historical analogies. And as usual, he's a very good public speaker, and so he did very, very well. The President talked about unity, the need to work together. You met recently, you had a press conference with Governor Quinn now, and you promised work together. How are these themes coming together relative not only to the federal level where the president's working, but here at the state government? Well, here in Illinois, we're off to a good start. Uh, we should not fool ourselves because we've got some ser very, very serious problems that lie ahead with the fiscal condition of the state of Illinois. So that uh, it's important that we get off to a good start. It's important that we keep our eye on the ball. It's important that we understand that there's going to be some very painful decisions that lie ahead. But this is not a time for the faint of heart. Uh, I, I, you know, any president can't show favoritism to his own state. But on the other hand, we're trying to get the $9 billion in the uh, capital money from the feds. Uh, knowing him as you can, though, still, isn't that, uh, can you pick up the phone and get a call back from the president? Or have you taken the opportunity maybe to talk about the capital money or some other projects? Is that something that that we at least as Illinoisans have in our favor? The, the real uh, need for Illinois on a construction program is that Illinois come up with its own money. So there has been several projects that have been appropriated by the Congress in Washington over two to three years, but Illinois has not had its own money for the required match. That hasn't changed. It's not going to change going forward. And that's why I said there are some painful decisions that lie ahead. It's nice to talk about a construction program and matching state against federal money, but what that means is that you need money at the state level. It will not be easy. It will not be an activity for the faint of heart. There will be a lot of pain up ahead. What, what kind of dollars does the state have to come up uh, to match that? Well, it's, it's a multi-million dollar program. It reaches into the billions. And it's not just the old project. Billions, billions of dollars. It's not just the old projects, it's the new ones going forward. And so almost all Illinoisans want a construction program. They recognize that a construction program helps the economy of the state, helps the well-being of the people of the state, but it doesn't come free. You have to pay for it. And that's where you get to the painful decisions. You were, you were here when Governor Edgar was struggling to balance the budget. How does this time compare back to the early 90s? Well, it's much worse than it was in 1991 when Edgar started his time as governor. He had a very difficult situation. To his credit, he was prepared to do the difficult things that had to be done to balance the budget, pay the bills, and try to move forward. But this is much worse than that. Going back to President Obama, we won't keep you much longer. Just. He, he had a little bit disappointing news today on the Commerce Secretary with uh, uh, Senator Gregg uh, decided not to join the administration. That aside, uh, how, how would you judge how the president has been handling himself uh, thus far very early, of course? Well, I think he's been doing very, very well. Uh, his appointments on balance have been very good. You know, they've shown that uh, uh, President Obama's got a good, uh, broad perspective on the problems of the nation. Uh, he's stepped into a situation that is extremely difficult. Uh, prior presidents didn't walk into something like this, maybe with the exception of Lincoln or Roosevelt. So you have to understand that we're living in very extreme times. And he's struggling with all of that and trying to make his appointments to the cabinet. So if you give him a little breathing room, I think it's well-deserved. One last question, since we're here on the 200th birthday of Lincoln, uh, what does Lincoln mean to you? Is he a hero? or what, what, What's been your uh, feelings about President Lincoln over the years, anything in particular, or is there some other political hero you look to? Well, I'm, I'm somewhat of a Lincoln scholar. I'm not a heavy-duty Lincoln scholar, but I've read about Lincoln, and uh, of course he was an outstanding president, an outstanding war president. Uh, somewhat similar to Winston Churchill during the Second World War. But before all of that, he was an outstanding politician in Illinois.
which President Obama spoke to tonight. And he was able to work his way through all of the political minefields of Illinois in the 1850s and become the nominee of the Republican Party for president in 1860. Uh, of course, you know, this goes without saying that uh, Lincoln was an outstanding figure in American history. And as you know, I like to uh, joke around the Capitol building and explain to people that he and I worked together to set up the Illinois governments. Speaker Mike Madigan, thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. His leadership means. What did you first say, think of the president's remarks? And, uh, and tell us a little bit uh, of your own thoughts on uh, Lincoln and the, what his legacy of leadership means for Illinoisans today. I thought the president gave a, uh, a great address. He's a very gifted public speaker. I think it was so appropriate to have the nation's first African-American president speaking here at the 200th anniversary of the birth of the great emancipator. I think that is very fitting. Um, I mean, like so many of my colleagues, Abraham Lincoln sets a mold that we all try to follow. I mean, someone who was a gifted politician, was a gifted speaker, but also true to his core principles, recognizing that you had to reach out and build a consensus, and you had to compromise, but you never compromised your core principles and what you truly, truly believed in. And I think it was that kind of person and only that kind of person that could have brought us through the great travesty of the Civil War. I'm sure you've been in uh, any number of tough political positions where it's easy to go along with the consensus, and you, how do you face that? And, and you know, maybe you're, you're, you're having to dig in, and maybe your fellow Republicans, that's when it's, it's, it's easier to go against the Democrats, but maybe your fellow Republicans are asking you to do something. Let's bring it down to a real-world situation. How do you approach those kind of moments? And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but do you think of a guy like Lincoln and what he went through, and does that influence you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in the end, I mean, we all face those situations at one time or another, and I think the key is to remember you have to do what you think is right. You have to do what your constituents, the people who sent you here, um, think is right. And in the end, I have found, and maybe I've just been extraordinarily blessed, but the people that I've served with in my party, both in the House and the Senate, they respect that. They understand that while you're a member of one party, you're sent here by a district. And you're here to do what's right and do what's right on their behalf. And in the end, that's the most important thing that's more important than party uh, in the end. And I think most, most of our colleagues are very understanding of that. You would also serve with uh, the president and the Senate. Uh, what are your thoughts, A, of him uh, as a leader and, and so far? how he's been doing in, in the presidency. It's only been a couple of weeks now, but... Well, I think that, that, like all presidents, he's probably still, to some extent, getting his feet under him. Um, but I think that President Obama has the potential to be a great leader. He truly does. And that is because I do think that President Obama, obviously, is a gifted speaker. He's a terrific communicator. I think that becomes more and more important for our presidents as time goes on and the age of instant communication is upon us. But I, I think he's got that potential. Uh, he's got some severe challenges before him. He's got some, some challenges that none of his predecessors have ever faced before. But uh, I think most of America is optimistic about President Obama, and so am I. Thanks for joining us.